Welcome back to the main stage. Again, I am joined by Curse Elements and SK Ocelot. We just saw an amazing matchup. The innovative M5 coming out strong. 10 minutes, there was an average of a kill a minute. It was three to seven at 10 minutes, guys. Elements, we were sitting back there and, and you just kept saying, there are so many wards. How did that give uh, M5 such an advantage? Um, well, you see with the, the Lee Sin running around so much, he could he could safeguard to whatever he wanted to. So any position he needed to be in, he could be in that position. So with the Alstar roam and him coming in like that one gank bottom where he, he safe forwarded in, kicked Janna back, which is instant kill. You know, that just gives you such a power to just control any point on the map. It was amazing. It was, it was, it was fantastic. Ocelot, same question, man. What do you think started that to snowball for M5? I think the main problem was that um, M5 managed to win bottom lane, 1v2. I don't know how, but Agor was literally destroying Jana and Koki both. It was like, I don't know, I, I, I didn't expect that at all. Like, Alistar was literally roaming over the map with uh, Lee Zin. It's impossible. It's just 4 versus 3 situation. They are obviously going to win it. They outplayed Dignitas a lot, and as I said, I don't know how, Manas, how they managed to win Agatha's cocky Diana bottom. That's it. Elements, give us an idea of why this is so different, why this roaming comp is working, and also why it's so dangerous to run. Um, we have Lee Sin, who has a, the great executability on his Q, right? Then you have Alistar, who just has so much CC. So if those two combined together, they can literally gank wherever they want and kill whoever they want. You watch, you notice middle, he flashes over, headbutt pulls, Lee Sin lands a Q, that was it. They, it was it. He had nothing he could possibly do. And they just continued to do that and took map control, took the, took the jungle, as we talked about early game. It just took everything from them because they didn't have an answer for that type of CC and that type of damage. In a fight like that, Ocelot, you saw the fights going on. It would be both ways. We'd be, okay, they're coming back. Dignitas has this. They took out Aurelia. But what was it that, that M5 was bringing to the table in those fights, do you think, that gave him the ace at least four times? I think the level advantage of Agot and the tankiness of him made actually the team fights. I think so. Um, and then, well, they got a setup that... It's uh, a little bit based on just Karus going in, you know, if you knew Karus, you're gonna die after. So, um, it's like, so tanky set up, really tanky. Karus, if he dies, he's gonna be a zombie, you know. Um, Agot with complete tanky build. So tanky team, impossible to kill. Once you are snowballed that way, impossible to come back from that. Yeah, definitely impossible. What are the picks and bans coming into this next match? Are we gonna see a Lee Sin? Um, almost definitely. <laughs> he was a powerhouse. I mean, he, I think he, that was the absolute deciding factor in their success. I mean, Alistar was, you know, a great addition to Lee Sin, but Lee Sin, just the positioning with the wards and just everything he did that game, hands down, Lee Sin was the defining factor in winning that game. So Dignitas did have first pick, first ban last game, and they went with the quick Shivana. Do you think they're going to try to grab that Lee Sin this time for Void Boy? I think they are not gonna let at least Alistair, I'm pretty sure actually, that they're gonna ban Alistair because he was literally carrying half the game. Like Alistair did so much work in that in that game. Or even maybe Agot, making sure that they cannot 1v2 bottom lane. I don't think you can 1v2 with any other AD hero. Yeah, one thing to notice throughout the entire game was the fact that, and I was speaking with Elements backstage, is they're always in the right position. And this is also dangerous because of that roaming. If you're really not getting the kills you need, you're going to fall behind in experience. But M5 continues to do this. They have all the wards around the map. Top lane was by Darian was played beautifully with that Aurelia, just able to farm between turrets. What do you do at that point when somebody can just go past you and continue farming your wave? Um, there's not much you can do other than call for the jungler to come, right? And that's exactly what they did. They got Shivana uh, to come up, and that's how they killed the Aurelia. But, I mean, you need more pressure. But if you don't have the ward control, because Alistair's just running around with oracles, so what do you do, right? You're, just, you're basically at the mercy of your own jungler coming to help you. And if he can't help you, you're going to lose that tower. And that's why we saw the, the top tower go down. On Ocelot, the mid was strong. But what can you give players an idea? You know, Skara flashing out, but still playing aggressive at that point. Do you call for help from your team if you're down on CS? Do you still go in there and get that? There's a lot of things that can go wrong, but there's a lot that can go right. How do you know when that payoff is going to count? It's actually a double-edged sword, you know? When, when you got an, uh, an enemy team that is playing that aggressive in your own jungle, when you got an Alistair flashing over the world and going crazy on you, like, 
it's a double edged sword. If human has to flash out and not die, they're gonna lose more, way more. So um, I don't know. I don't know. There is a point where maybe it's worth it, which is if you get kills all the time. But normally, I don't think that's gonna work. So we'll see now. I think mid lane is gonna be totally different now. I think mid lane is gonna be more passive right now. It's gonna receive less ganks from both sides. I think it's gonna it's gonna be more base on farm. I think. All right, guys, the crowd is ready. Everybody at home is ready. We just broke a new record, 250,000 plus viewers in this. Everybody give yourselves a round of applause. $50,000 on the line, freaking D-Man, take it away. Welcome back to the commentary booth for game two, the Intel Extreme Masters Grand Finals between Moscow 5 and Team Digantas. Moscow 5 up 1-0 and right now. D-Man, what do you think is gonna happen here? Well, wow, it's just mentioned there. I mean, we just said it now. Voiboy, for the first time, I think, in this tournament, lost his lane there. And now, I don't know whether that was really his fault. I mean, obviously, Darian pushed him heavily, but obviously, it was a lot of help from Lee Sin. As also I mentioned, will he pick up Lee Sin? I'm not too sure. Maybe they're going to have to. Will it be a first pick Lee Sin, which is a dangerous thing to do because they, they can immediately just set them off the counter. Will yep. they go for Janna this time? I'm not too sure either. I mean, Genjo just showed them sort of how a 2v1 a lane that, yeah uh, that was incredible yeah i think the the game really relied on on the trinity of of the ridiculous you know ability of lisa to roam around the roam alice for rewarding everything as element said where you know lisa could get whatever he wanted and he could he could stun for lisa to get those kills and then karthus could kind of show up and get free assists and then also ergot was able to 1v2 with the early blue buff there um, and it was those three champions that kind of enabled everything to happen because of how much they, they sort of taxed Shivana and, and how much they would, if they ever wanted to, actually show up top lane and, and harass Voiboy out. That, you know, in isolation, you know, the, the, solo, the solo top and solo mid were fine. You, you know, uh, Scar was doing okay against Alex uh, in that Mordekaiser versus uh, Karthus lane. And the same for Nautilus versus Aurelia. They, they were more or less in a holding pattern, but the ability of Moscow, the rest of Moscow 5's team to affect those lanes was phenomenal and uh, you know they look like they're on a whole new level of play that we've not seen that level of involvement from the whole team across the map there and i don't know if it's just if, if that's just specific lineups and picks and bands or if that's going to be something that dignitas uh can actually adopt themselves yeah and interestingly i just spotted odx he stood behind dignitas there the uh the manager and owner of them. It's the first time I've seen him really up there actually talking to the team, obviously giving them a little bit of words of confidence, you know, it's like, all right, guys, just calm down. You've done one day, one nil down, you can sort this one out. It's not, not, not lost yet, you can, you know, and it's hard because against what authorities mentioned it in the group stage, you know, they lost that game to CLG and they said the game against Dickens, we just were not focused. We'd lost, we'd lost the game, completely lost the plot, didn't know what was going yeah. on. And it's, it, they, you know, it's so hard to get their concentration back. Now, Moscow 5 had just effectively played the per perfect game, you know, from level one onwards, they were getting the gangs out there, which is pretty incredible. We're going into the ban straight away, though, and Cassiopeia, again, like you say, banned out by Moscow 5 almost every single game here. I think Carp it's 100% already them. taken out as well. Yeah. Gangplank and Ergot this time, so they did not want Genja on Ergot again. Yeah, and I think one thing that's going on here is because the Gintos have last pick, they have the ability to pick Karthus into a safe lane, and I think that's what, what Moscow 5 are thinking right now, and they're actually banning the Lee Sin. I'm, I almost would have expected Moscow 5 with Gintos here, the way the bans are going. The other thing that's interesting is though they banned out the Urgot they saw last time, they banned Gangplank, and Moscow 5 has not run Gangplank yet well, the entire turn. Are they forcing Shivana ban here and leaving Shen open, maybe? They should ban a Relic. Or are they going to ban Shen, in which case they're going to pick up Shivana straight away? Well, both teams have always gotten rid of Shen every single time, I believe. Um, their CLG might have run Shen against um, Moscow 5, I don't quite remember. Uh, but no, it's going to be Nocturne, so, so all that is still available here. Mm. Uh, Aurelia and Shen both. This is the first time actually that Shen's been allowed for either of these two teams. Because uh, I, I don't remember what, what happened with Moscow 5 versus CLG number one. Uh, but up until then, yeah, Aurelia, I think Dignitas might be baiting for Aurelia too. They want to give that to Voiboy, so we'll see what happens here. Oh, also, Ryan was not banned from before. Okay, so interestingly, well, I mean, We've seen Rise being picked first time, and you can count him. There's, you know, he's a quite a short-range champion, mm -hmm. but will be built up fairly strong later on. But that means that Shivana's available, Shen's available, Jan is available, yeah, Areni is available. Which one will they go for in these first two picks? I mean, it's a big decision for them to make. It's a lot of pressure on. Do they feel they can lock down that top lane? Do they think they want to take a Shivana away from Moscow Five? Because if if they don't take it, it's almost certainly going to be picked up by Moscow Five. And I think, actually, I'm not too sure about Shen for Darien. I don't know how much Darien's played Shen. Obviously, generally, in most games, he's banned out of that. Yeah. So, probably has had practice of it. Like you say, they've had a 10-day uh, session, which 
I think he's worked very well for them. They did the exact same thing for before Kiev. They were there yep. for seven days ahead of time, mm -hmm. completely practiced. And actually, it's a big shout out for the rank 5v5s. Yep, and I really like this Aurelia Shivana grab here because it actually goes one step farther than what CLG had, where CLG banned Lee Sin, Gangplank, Shivana, and they grabbed Nocturne. Well, Dignitas have also banned out Nocturne here, so they're going to go even deeper into that jungler pool, and we'll see just how many champions Diamonds knows. Uh, Darian also not getting Aurelia this time. No, does not have the Shivana available here, so we'll see what other solo Topsy plays. And they've already grabbed Rise, so I don't think they're going to do the, the Ken and Vladimir. Um, well, they I mean, almost definitely won't. Uh, I mean, they could run AD Ken, they could still run Darian Vlad, but I think Darian would lose to Aureli at that point. They're gonna grab Janna, and Janna is a great champion for them. Moscow 5 do love running that champion. They've only really allowed her to be hit for the other team a couple of times this tournament. Uh, she's been the most popular support for sure so far at this IEM World Championship. Uh, but I can't predict the rest of this lineup here. I don't know what they're gonna go for. Yes, when they're gonna go for Shen, they are gonna go okay. for Shen by the looks of it. So 12 seconds to lock that one in. And Janna as well, I'm trying to wonder if Ghosty Pepper hasn't played Janna too much throughout this tournament. He generally goes with all sorts of supports, and I, he's actually been with Sona quite a few times. I think CLG okay. went to pick Sona both games. I may be wrong with that one. Um, there has been a lot of games this tournament. A -A so, and they've all been fantastic, which is which is great. Oh, yeah. Every, almost every single game has been phenomenal. Uh, a lot of them have been just ridiculously close. And, and I remember actually at the end of the third place match yesterday, every other booth was closed, and the only thing up in the halls was just this match. Yeah. It was still packed, which was great, because you guys are awesome. Um, there's a lot of uh, picks available still here, so the Janna's gone. With Urgot out, they might just grab that Corky as they always do, yeah. and as I say that, there's the Corky grab. Um, and, you know, we'll see what else they're gonna try to do here. Um, they still could pick the Mage, they could pick that last, honestly, uh, but pretty much the, the, last two, the last two slots here, which is Support and Mage, they've already got their counterparts available oh. there. Soraka, we've not seen her very often in this tournament. Apparently they do not want to grab Nunu. I would have expected Nunu to be a pretty decent pick here, but... Um, they will insta lock in that Soraka. We saw her uh, being played, I think, by Curse in the in the match that Curse almost won against Moscow Five. Yeah, uh, they're, they're the closest so far as well. Yeah, right? and it was uh, Soraka Cog, I believe, bottom lane, uh, or I forget the AD carry entirely. But they did run Soraka in that game, and that was the closest Moscow Five got to losing um, that in CLG. So. Um, you know, and actually, we'll that, that game, out. I think, was the one that Voibo went on a massive spree. He so is Aurelia. He, so he has been very strong. A, yeah, and again, he was Aurelia. He has been very strong against them. So we could see the return of it. And, ah, of course, Udia. We forgot about Udia. Of course, you know, obviously, what, what are the junglers you've got available? Well, I've got a big pool of them, actually. I could just take anything. And Udia, actually, CLG were kind of locking in. St. Vicious really his, his character of choice for quite a while throughout this tournament. Mm -hmm. And, of course, Genjiron Cogmore has been a very strong thing as well. And uh, <laughs> But Russian from behind us there. And that, that's going to be really, really strong. Janna is a great... Uh, well, oh, jeez. Janna and Shen both are great babysitters for Cogmore. Cogmore will get to get will get to scale to late game this entire time. And yeah, they can try to dive that with, with Shivana and Aurelia, but that's going to be very, very difficult. We'll see if he grabs Mordekaiser again. It's very melee heavy against Janna, which is a little bit scary, but at that point, with a Mordekaiser, you get to burst really hard there. Or he could run, I think Vagar's tricky because Vagar's not good against Rise, but Vagar's really good against Kog'Maw. Um, and we saw that work pretty pretty well, actually. Um, Morgana actually looks like they're going to play Protect the Corky a little bit. Um, also, it gives the Black Shield uh, to Aurelia, so Aurelia can jump down on Cog. I like that. Morgana actually really good against Janna there because you can use that Black Shield to prevent <clears throat> the Monsoon pushing them back, and you get yourselves um, the ability to just push on through and guarantee a kill. And if Voi Voi can scale as well as he did before, if he can outlane Shen or possibly Udyr, um, Black Shield could be all he needs to, to get some kills. Okay, interestingly, we're going for a remake here. Um, where do you stand on this? Because for me, that seemed like a remake to change my runes. I, and I, I thought that wasn't allowed. Well, they are all in the lobby, and the faster they, they, we click the start button, the, the less chance they have to actually hop <laughs> into the rune page. Um, I, I'm not sure what the remake was about exactly. Maybe they tried to do a last second swap mm. and then didn't do it in time. Yeah. Um, I, don't, I don't know quite what it would be. Maybe they wanted more time to, to think about what skins they wanted. Uh, but everyone is back into the game. I am ready, uh, and we'll see if the teams are. Um, so, but what do you predict for the actual winner here? Because we've got you know, a very good diving team here. Shivana, Aurelia, Morgana, uh, Corky, uh, and I forgot, oh, Soraka in there, who can dump out some support as well. Um, Moscow 5 team, though, they've got a lot of really big threats there. Rise and Kog'Maw, able to put out damage every second for a very, very long time. 
Uh, Shen and Udyr can be very big damage threats as well, also very tanky. We've got that Janna just for the very big protection there for the Kog'Maw. Yeah, and the, the, the big thing for me is, you know, every game we've done, every best of three we've done, we've had two zeros. We have, actually. <laughs> so by rule of thumb, Moscow 5 should take this 2-0. Yeah, but, but there's, there's only ever been actually one um, full three-game series, and two. that was eight. Me and Joe oh. done both. Oh, okay, yeah, okay. Because yeah. I know it was AA, CLG, and then uh, the other one... What was the other... Oh, CLG, AA, AA, and uh, what was the one we did the, the other day? It was the quarterfinals. God, there's been too many S games. SK? <laughs> oh, yeah, SK versus AA, of course, okay. was the other... There are yeah, yeah. the three. So we're going towards blind pick. They're just going to quickly lock in those champions again for the game. But, you know, Dignitas, they're going to have the pressure on them. Moscow 5 just played brilliantly. So, you know, as from a confidence point of view, they've got to be careful they're not o overconfident. They're diving in there. Oh, dear, this time, will we see any sort of craziness from this time? And for, I don't think we will, because Gint's not going to be able to just be as strong. He won't be able to 2v1 it, so he's going to be uh, with Grossy Pepper down the bottom there. Will we see any roaming from Dignitas? Probably not. It's only going to be the two junglers this time, so it's going to be a bit more of a standard meta from both teams, I believe. Mm -hmm. And we're going to see how this bottom lane turns out there. Normally, uh, Cutie Pie and Locust win their bottom lane, even against against all versus against all authority when uh, Yellowstar got a that. double kill there uh, at the very, very start of the game, and they still managed to equal out in minions there. Uh, Cutie Pie was playing Aurelia that, or sorry, uh, Ezreal that time. Uh, Yellowstar was on Corky. Um, but, you know, as we saw last game, the bottom lane 1v2 actually Genja still won that. Now, you know, Kogma, less of, a, of an aggressive laner, and, and Dignitas do love to play very aggressively in your face. So if that, it, we'll see if that ends up being a really big deal for them. But we have the delay ticker counting on down. We'll be getting into the game very, very shortly. And will we see the, the similar sort of style that COG maybe ran, which is the split push? Obviously, when you've got Shen, you can just easily, quite happily keep him in one lane, keep the other guys down, and you can just ulti straight in any time you like. He doesn't need teleport, which gives them a big advantage straight away, certainly for the dragon fights. Obviously, they went for a seven-minute dragon last time around. Uh, yeah, very yeah. early stuff. Obviously, that was because they managed to build up such a huge advantage, but there's a lot of things available for Moscow 5 in this one. But like you say, damage-wise, Dignitas looking good. Yeah, Dignitas have more total damage threats, I think, just by a little bit. But the amount of damage threat on a Kog'Maw is a little bit higher mm. than that for a Corky. If and you let it. Well, yeah, if, if you let him. I mean, he pays for that by being unsafe. And a Black Shield at Aurelia, good luck being safe from that. But uh, you never know. Uh, you know, proper team play can make that work out just fine for Moscow 5. Um, and I just can't quite predict that one. I sort of predicted last time that, that Dignitas' late game setup would just win it out for them, but they got crushed in the first sort of 20 and almost to the point where they couldn't come back anymore. Uh, and they just kind of, you know, they kind of got aced twice in a row. So, you know, we'll see if it's going to be the teamwork or what, but we are into the game here. Guys, give a cheer, give a round of applause for Moscow 5 at Dignitas. Back we are. This is game two of the grand finals. Moscow 5 currently up 1 0 on Dignitas, but you know, if any team is going to take a map off at 5 this uh, tournament, might as well be Dignitas. The last chance they have to stay in this tournament. Look through the lineups. We've got Alex Ish going to be playing Rise, the solo mid for Moscow 5. Goes to Pepper, the support on Janna. Third up is Genja, AD carry on Kogma. And actually, I'm surprised he has a non sustaining support and actually went for a Doran's Blade to start. He didn't even run Lifesteal, Quince. He's just 21 offense, and it's like, yeah, they got this, no problem. Jungler, they're gonna be Diamonds. He is a uh, Phoenix Udyr. Find the solo top is Shen there. Darian, who did do a, an amazing job last time, something like nine and two in the previous game. I think it has Cutie Pie on Corky, the AD carry. Locust Soraka gonna be supporting there. Three wards in the opening build. Will dominate jungling on Shivana. Voiboy solo top as Aurelia has had a lot of hype about him this tournament, but so far in this final, not been as dominant as it was before. And finally, Scar solo mid playing Mage. Actually, two health and a mana potion in the opening build is going to be Morgana here. Let's see how that works out for him. Minions have spawned, and no invasions actually happening from either team. Uh, one safe ward here from, uh, from Dignitas, and a pretty aggressive ward actually from Moscow 5. There comes a pull up on the Wraiths, and that's going to be going to I Will Dominate. We're not taking those down and now onto the blue buff. Yeah, meanwhile, they see the golems being taken away by Moscow 5. They have picked up the wraiths, uh, the wolves, sorry, and they will go towards the golems. And the blue buff, well, I'm going to assume it's going to go towards Dominate, but Keatsby is hanging around for it. 
No, he will go back. And he's just helping out Dominate for a quick and early start, which means actually Dominate didn't he use his smite that time. Yeah. yeah. So we'll keep our eye on that one. So we'll look down the bottom. And Ginja actually starting out with a Dolan's Blade there. That's a pretty aggressive start from a Cogmore. Yeah, absolutely. He's going to be doing a lot of damage there. I guess they figured that with a Soraka lane, Soraka's not the most aggressive support. He's not going to get bullied out too much, which is surprising me because, again, Dignitas is really known for being an aggressive lane here. But Moscow 5 actually already had put down two wards to check for counter jungling or to check for invasions at bottom. And so they know that Dominate was not going for that at all. It's actually quite the advantage there. I mean, it's thankful that he didn't even try to, to, to invade there, but Uju's going to have his Lizard pretty quickly here. Shivana the same. Slightly uh, ahead to level three. A little bit of pressure back and forth. Cutie Pie taking some damage from Genja. His top lane. We're going to see how Voiba can do against Darian. Darian actually winning the lane so far. Doing a lot of damage here. And Shivana actually making her way up to this top lane. We're going to see if they can get a gank out of this. He has already learned Shadow Dash. Voiba going to go in there, go for the attacks. There's a stun, and he's up into range of Darian. The ignite is on. He's going to dash in one more time, but no, not enough damage. Did make him burn flash. Otherwise, though, not a lot of other pressure. No, and he's had to back away from that one. Like you say, Dignitas going with that early defensive ward straight away over at Wraith's there, so making sure they didn't get invade this time. I will dominate. Obviously not happy with being caught out on the red buff. Pretty much unawares that it was uh, coming. Go to Pepper there, forced to back away. I'm a cute to bite, putting a quick blind in his face. Skara has got Diamonds just below him, and Diamonds is coming out now. You can see he managed to get the Rune Prison down on him. Oh, and a very good dark bindings there from Skara. Has to burn the flash, though. So he's going to get dived on the turret. I think he might be first blood. Yes, he will be. Moscow 5 going very aggressive, and tower diving at level 4 there. Very nicely played. And Moscow 5, well, they did it again, didn't they? Yeah, they've been really, really good at punishing mid, and it's a pretty much a trade bar move for Moscow 5, too, is the, ge the general, like, flash Rune Prisons. Uh, from Alex, had just enough mana to full combo that. And that's what you get for going boots first on Udyr. You get some really, really good ganks, even against someone like Morgana. We saw she had went forward, and it was like long Q2 had went forward for a last hit and completely overextended, got picked up by the spell combo. So you can see bottom lane has been pushed. Genja, I think, is going to stick around. I don't expect them to go back up by yet. 788 gold. Keep in mind, see where I will dominate goes. They really want to get an early kill on that Shen of Darien. But unfortunately for him, he's got that uh, Doran's shield start out, and he's just going to be quite tanky. You can see the uh, ward going down from Voiboy there, so he's just been back on board. Actually comes towards, uh, building towards Mercury Treads, possibly there. Have a look towards Locust. Locust got to be very careful. Went actually the very long way around there, and he's going to go all the way back around as well. Immediately the pings go down. Oh, and a ping straight down from Gosu Pepper to clear out that uh, river. So that ward has been immediately cleared out by Moscow 5 very well aware of that, so which means they want to try and open up some ganks for uh, Diamonds there, or at least a little bit of roaming around that uh, bottom river. In the middle, Alex Itch, like I say, did manage to uh, pick up the assist. And unfortunately, it was the kill for Darren, just keeping my eye on Voidboy at the top there. Goes diving in, actually took a tower hit, that was less than ideal. And you can see Darian immediately taking effect on that one, will try and lunge towards him, and Voidboy's going to have to back away and keep chucking down those potions. Locust roaming around the map. A little bit of harassment there actually from Ghosty Pepper, who's now low on mana, but Genja getting lower and lower. Still a summoner heal and flash, though, so it shouldn't be too easy to kill. Back, always oh, man, boy, boy, getting lower and lower from Darian. Still has his own flash, but Darian has Ignite, so if he can burst enough damage, flash will not save you from dying, so got to be a little bit careful there. Diamond's going to go back into his jungle, throw out a little bit more, but they've been pushing Genja down pretty well. He's down to 37 minions. So Corky actually probably won't be winning it in minions after this uh, this tower attempt. But they put they bullied him around a little bit. They've done a decent job there. Alex coming up towards the top though, and Voiba could be dropping very very soon here. Yeah, actually, he, Alex was spotted straight away by that ward that uh, Voiboy had placed earlier on. Voiboy continuing to just stick in lane. Has had to go through all those health pots though. So Darian doing a fantastic job of keeping away. Meanwhile, Darian is obviously just sat there. All he's had so far is that uh, Doran's shield. Void Boy now has got I will dominate him, trying to bait him towards him. Scar has just gone back to bio. I'll keep an eye on that. He has managed to bait Darian out. This time they're going to go in. Exhaust goes down. You can see the exhaust the ignite on him. Will I will dominate? Didn't die for it there. Didn't want to get taunted on the tower and just backs away from it. Void Boy, they will keep the harass down, but they needed to the kill there, I feel. Yeah, they needed to do a little bit more there. Unfortunately, though, between uh, Shadow Dash and Faint, he tanked a fair good amount of that damage. That's the problem with having a jungle like Shivana and not Udyr, is you don't bring any crowd control yourself unless you've got red buff in that. I mean, damage is nice, but it just was not enough. 
so far. Shen still surviving his lane, doing a pretty good job last hitting. He's winning that lane. He is winning that lane. Skara has been back, got himself a double Doran's rings. Alex Seek's trying to burn out as much as he can, so it's forcing back for a short while. The blue buff has spawned, and I don't think Ding Tess are going to be able to respond to this one. But the ward from Janna there, I believe, has come up and placed it onto blue. Can they manage to get into Steeler? I don't think they will be able to do anything about it. You can see that Goosey Pepper is lingering, but uh, Cogmore is a long way away. Goosey Pepper is going to have to pull up something spectacular to try and get the steal with that Howling Gale. It will go up and nearly got it, actually. But Skara will manage to steal it away. You can see Alex Hitch also picking up the one from his side of the map. So both teams picking up their respective buffs so far. And Mikita Pai trying to catch on towards Genji. You can see they've had to ward up that bottom brush. So Moscow 5 continuing to keep hold of that bottom lane. Yeah, but I'm surprised actually for having, you know, a, a lane like this that they're not really getting bullied out whatsoever. I would have expected, especially from Cutie Pie, a much more aggressive sort of set of plays here. Mid lane, some aggression coming in. Alex could get jumped on. Boy Boy waiting in the wings. But it seems like he's sensed that one out and has left. Actually, the reward yet would have spotted him coming across. So they did know about Boy Boy. Alex, but successfully safe. Yeah. The lack of games from Dignitas could become a problem, but it is only 1-0, so they are not having too bad a game so far. You can see the uh, CS down the bottom lane. It is slightly in the advantage for Corky. We've just got a glimpse of diamonds going across there. Remember, Ward about to be placed actually by Locust, I think, there. And a pink one, I think, just placed there. And they have gone towards Locust. Locust getting caught out there by Cogmore. Can he manage to catch him down? No, he will not. He's had to use the heel, though. And I'm accused by turning around, immediately throwing out all of his ulties and missing. And Goosey Pepper actually took a lot of the damage from that fight. Meanwhile, at the top, Voiboy being kept away from the CS at the moment by Darian. Darian doing a fantastic job. Does dash in there, quick engage. And Voiboy coming out far worse again there against Darian. Darian has been back to bike, got himself that giant's belt. Meanwhile, in the middle, you can see Diamond's getting caught out as well with a uh, dark bindings. Just keep my eye on that top lane as Voiboy continues to harass on towards Darian. This time, Shivana will come around the backside. Has I will dominate got the position this time? You can see Darian is immediately going to try and get away from this one. Oh, I will dominate. Go for the ulti, but he managed to dash out of it. I think Darian may have enough. He's just going to dash straight across here and will get away. I have to use the flash, though. So, some of the spell used. Scarra was coming up to try and cover him off but they are avoiding any damage at the moment, Freak. Yeah, that was a really, really good sort of set of spidey senses there by Darian. Sensing that the gank was coming because of where Voiboy's position was and walked all the way around, duking pretty much everything, and he's doing a great job this game. Winning the lane in minions, and uh, pretty much everyone, you know, winning their lanes quite, quite well. First blood on Skara, of course, did help Rise quite a bit. Playing aggressively here, pushing back Skara. Oh, he does land the Q, but of course, Torrent the Soil already been used, so won't get any follow-up damage there on Alex. Who's actually already grabbed some, uh, some magic resist too with the Negatron Cloak. So he's not going to be going down. Genja actually quite low, though. Cutie Pie could dive in. Still has Flash and Summoner Heal, but still he could force those Summoners away. They have the ward coverage to not die to Udyr. I'm surprised the... I'm really just, again, surprised they're not playing more aggressively. This is kind of unlike Dignitas. Yeah, I think they're very worried about those ganks coming in. Obviously, since they placed their ward, remember the pink ward was placed on top of it, so they've kind of been very cautious of that Diamonds, which has just come across with an Oracle now, Diamonds, and has cleared out those wards of Dignitas immediately. That's going to force them back in there, which is actually, despite the fact they know they're not getting the kills, it's actually keeping Dignitas away from a lot of the CS, and Diamonds comes in, and he realizes the job he's doing. Did just catch a glimpse of Alex Hitcher uh, having to come around and clear out those wraiths because he caught sight of I will dominate going towards him so he's like well I'd rather take them myself and diamonds is he going to go for that he's going to find out another ward so that's the third ward he's already picked up with that oracles meanwhile down the bottom I'm kids by getting the slow on him the ulti will land on him but he's going to back away from that one I think that's going to be enough for Genja to maybe go back and buy he has got triple Dorans and there's boots and yeah it's going to be a teleport back for Genja yeah, thousand golds. We might go for the uh, the Riggles uh, Zeal build we saw before. Want to have enough for a Zeal in full, but see what he goes for here. Looks like just going to be the Brawler's gloves and some health potions. So looks like it will be a, a Zeal rush here. It's the mid lane Scar still farming up against Alex. Alex with his Tier of the Goddess, 76 mana on it so far. So not super advanced, but Ghost Pepper actually going to recall as well. So a lot of minions languishing now in this bottom lane. As everyone actually went back to buy, BFs were picked up on QD buy. This is probably the best chance for Dignitas to play aggressively. They have a big item advantage now, now that he has that BF sword. And actually, for the first time, I think, ever in the world, QD buy did not get three Dorn's Blades. 
Moscow Five seem to be reacting to this. They've realized that Dignitas have gone back and they're going to try and quickly get Dragon, but I don't think they've done it quick enough. Shivana is back there. Cogmore is back there. Sorry, Corky is coming back as well for Dignitas. They have the ward placement here, so they can see that it's happening. And you can see Moscow Five trying to burn it as quick as possible. They're going to peel away. They're going to keep on it. They have the smite ready. Will I would dominate be able to get in? No. Moscow Five managed to get the smite down and a good free exchange there. And Moscow Five going to be happy with that Dragon. 18-15, the respawn there. Let's see how that works out for him. You can see Genja going back to last hitting, and he's at, let's see, 89 to 89. Actually equalized the lane entirely. Plus, of course, they have that Dragon advantage. You can see a 2,000 gold lead right now for Moscow 5. It hasn't been growing aside from the Dragon kill. But Voibe still having a tough time at bottom lane. 91 to 76, 15 minions. Now I will dominate going up towards that top lane. I realize Darien immediately there was a pingo down. They have such good vision control. They're like, okay, he could be going towards the blue. The ping went, so like, well, we've got to keep our eye out. And Diamonds actually went around the side there, looking for all the spots where possibly I will dominate could be lurking to try and get this steal away. Remember, they don't have smite, so they wouldn't have been able to protect it if they did, because Dragon was going away. But nevertheless, Alex will pick that up. Scar is having to pick up his own blue, and then will do that. So can keep in hold of those blues for the next few moments. Diamond's now diving in towards Voiboy. Voiboy might get caught out of position here. Does have to use a flash. He's got an ulti popping backwards, so that will keep him at range there. And the clairvoyance actually used on him. They kind of wanted to go for him there. Diamonds is wondering whether he's going to maybe interrupt him. He's got to be a little bit careful, though. He has got that Oracle and doesn't want to waste that one. I will dominate, meanwhile, just to the right-hand side of him, picking up that red buff. All right, Cutie Pie. And actually now, Locust getting pushed away by Kenja. It's like he will not keep pushing in there. Soraka has Wish, of course, so she'd be safe. And Wish is actually going to help Dignitas quite a bit. Moscow 5 are very good at diving in for kills. But Wish will help stymie that a little bit. So we'll see if that's going to work out for Dignitas or not, or if the lack of sort of team fight safety, uh, with the lack of Monsoon is going to be a bigger problem there. Star last hitting quite successfully, and he's going to keep moving in towards his turret now. Nope, never going to back off. A little bit afraid of Alex and possibly Udyr, because actually Diamonds is right there. Goes up wards again with his oracles. Boybe roaming again towards the mid. And then, kind of, yeah, no, he's still going to wait around. Shivana waiting in the wings as well. I will dominate. Might go to clear some wards. Scar might bait here. Dominate going to run into Udyr. They're going to get caught out. Do you think they go for any more damage? Alex is running over. Dominate might have spotted the ward if he went into the brush. Alex, though, did not take any bait, did not push forward there. Yeah, they were hoping he would try and go in for him. And Shivana will go into that bush, realize that there was a ward there. Immediately down the bottom there, you can see it diving on towards Locust. Locust might get taken down. Zephyr goes down. The exhaust on Genji, though, might be enough to hold him off, but he will go down. And now Valkyrie from Mami Kudipai and Nosco 5 pick up the second kill of the game. And they are, scarily enough for Dignitas, starting to win that bottom lane. Yeah, great, great job by Genji and Gosu Pepper. The jump in, you saw actually uh, Kogma, they knew how the lane was moving, and Kogma waited at the very front of the brush down there, and as soon as Soraka face-checked, he unloaded everything. The slow was on, the exhaust of Corky, so Corky could not stop Kogma, and then Kitipai had to just rush out there, and he's actually going for his trademark build, that Black Cleaver. He picks that whenever he has auto-attackers on his team who want to rely on that armor reduction. Boy, we're not having a fun time at top lane. Sustain from Hiten style is not keeping him alive enough. Darien with a level advantage and a minion advantage still is pretty happy with that one. So you can see a little poke in the middle there. And both junglers with the oracles on, the Diamonds is going to spot that. I think that's about the sixth or seventh ward I've seen him picking up so Oh, she far. pushing the bottom lane. Cutie Pie fighting up with Genja. The Shen ult comes in, keeping him alive. And the taunt lands. Cutie Pie going down. Excellent job there. And Diamond's already there at top lane to stop the boy boy from pushing down the turret. Great team coordination. And great protection as well there. So Genja, while well dived on, already having that problem. And that's going to give Boy a little bit of free lane, but not for too long. You can see Scarra going across trying to get those wraiths away. And actually, for the first time, I think he's starting to get in a little bit of invade. But you can see Alex each coming back with that Banshee's Veil on as well. He is not going to be too scared about uh, Scarra anymore. He can't get those... Uh, Dark bindings on him. He's quite happily got a little buff over there. And you can see immediately he's just being so aggressive and just keeping them out base. Kara's gonna. Is he gonna go back? No, he's not. He's got an easy large rod. Trying to build up towards that Zonia's early on. Will Black shield it up. Alex H gives him another blast to the face and continues to keep him away from any of the CS, but it's hard to keep that pull away from them. And he's just gonna farm up with that at the moment. But Dignitas 
having to regroup here, and they're still really not being able to pick up any kills. I would dominate just passing a ward there. Will pick it up. But uh, Dictas are having a problem in these lanes, and they are not winning out in any lane at all at the moment. They are struggling. I'm looking to buy it, getting a quick burst on him from uh, Cogmore, and Cogmore is becoming a scary beast down the bottom there already. Yeah, Cutie Pie not doing a very good job in this lane. He's last hitting very well, though, 130. He's keeping up with Kogma almost. He's actually down 12 right now, but still, considering how this game is going, that's not too bad. But they do need something to happen in Ziggatos' favor. They've not been able to push really anywhere. The Dominate playing Shivana has not been able to pin down Darien almost whatsoever. He's never gotten a gank at mid or bottom either. So really, Moscow 5 are just sort of playing as happily as they want to, winning their lanes as they wish. Their late game is phenomenal. It's going to really rely on Aureli to actually stop this Kogma, who for once, uh, no, actually did go Wriggles again, so he's actually plenty durable with a Janna shield in there as well. Might just be able to face tank Aurelia in most of these fights. Ghost Viper pushing back there on Cutie Pie. Did know he's going to take some damage here. Still getting lower and lower. But now Genja's here to say, hey, back off Janna. Yeah, indeed. Managed to get TLT on towards Cutie Pie as well. So immediately Genja being very aggressive straight in there. Diamonds is joining Alex in the middle there, not being able to get him towards Scara though. Has completed that Zonny's Hourglass now, they're going to move across to try and pick up Blue. Scara's going to do identical things, so again that's going to be both teams picking up a Blue of their own. Genja clearing out down that bottom, has come back with that Wriggles, if you just mentioned. Meanwhile, I'm a cutie boy, went straight for BF Sword, probably going to go for a Black Cleaver Beef, that's his standard sort of build he's been world building towards. Scara is going to get the protection, I'm a cutie boy, comes down there. Dragon has spawned out. And Moscow 5 looking like they're starting to react to that. Dignitas, though, in position to maybe get away their first dragon, I believe, of the World Finals here. Yeah, this might be the case. They are grouping around it. Udyr just recalled, which is probably the best time for Dignitas to do anything here. I will dominate in mid with Skara and Cutie Pie. They're all shoving mid right now. It's very strange to have three in mid. They could go for the turret kill, actually. This would be pretty nice. Everyone else is out of position, and they are going to go for this one. And I think this is actually their first turret kill of the World Finals as well. They will pick this one up, and there we go. You can see if they can move on now towards the dragon. Dignitas moving away, goes to Pepper nearby. Scar's a little bit afraid. Logos is there. Kogma actually still pushing bot lane. He's going to give up the turret. There's the Oracle sweep on the ward. And yes, they're going to pull up on dragon. But everyone else is nearby. Shen, of course, can ult in. Aurelia coming down from base. Diamond's in range now. Dignitas, this is going to be a little bit difficult for them. They're still going to get lower and lower. Diamond's still staying nearby. Darren picks up the turret kill at top. There's some pressure on Cutie Pie. The Shendel goes off. Diamond's got a giant shield. And immediately to go in. Morgana with the Zonia's the pop. Alex Ish. He is going to go down. And now will it be Genja? Looks like it's going to be the target. Boy, wait, no. Goes to Pepper. Going to take a massive amount of damage. Cutie Pie running away from Diamonds. The exhaust is on. Boy, wait, still going in. But falls to Genja, who's incredibly powerful. Diamond's taking more damage. Cutie Pie, the Ignite, and all oh, the damage output. And now it looks like Dignitas. Forced to run away. They've lost three. Logos will be stunned. They've now lost four. The Oracles is gone. Only Morgana alive. And there we go. Darien pulling up on Dragon. A great team for Moscow 5. Even with Rise dying right away. They cleaned up a lot of kills thanks to Udyr. Some pressure up on the Darien, but it will not matter. Scar will run. Dragon picked up 26-18 the respawn. Yeah, not good for Dignitas there. For a moment, I thought when Scar had got himself in there with Morgana. Popping that Zonyas, but they just couldn't get on towards Genja. He kept his positioning very well. He was far back there. And of course, that was the Oracle lost, which Shivana had. Less than ideal. And Genja will continue to farm up. Has got that zeal on him as well. You can see Udia, well, still kept that Oracles on him. Kind of a little bit of a mistargeting as well. You know, the problem is Moscow 5 are pretty tanky. They did get Alex each down pretty early on. You can see that bottom lane continuing being pushed. Will it go down to minions? I think Corky might just be able to save it for a brief second, but it is on 59 hit points left on it. Alex each now has returned to late. Got that glacial shroud on him now as well. So he's going to be stronger and stronger as he goes. And Voiboy, well, he's lost his lane again. It's a, it's a, it's a fact. And, you know, they've been trying to get those ganks on Shen. It is very hard to get him, though, and he's a slippery little sucker, and why will Dominate has not been able to pin him down. See, with the lack of CA, uh, crowd control that you do get from Shivan, he does put great damage output. You have no crowd control. You can see Locust actually being pushed on oh. by Genja there. Goes to Pepper, having to use his ulti on towards Ima Kutupai. Alex Hitch coming round, and now Ima Kutupai is surely going to get pinned out here. Genja will finish him off. He didn't even need the help from Alex, but he managed to get the steal regardless. Not going to thank him for that one. Shen, meanwhile, is Darian feeling strong enough to just go straight up and 1v1 Voidboy in the face? I think he might be. If uh, both built wits end, though, Void Boy, though, is going to have to back away from this one. 
Yeah, he's still down about 22 minions right now. He picked up two kills in that one team fight, so he has all the and has the kills right now, but Shen managed to pick up three so far, so he's in all kinds of a happy place right now. And he's still ahead of Void by Scar now in a dangerous place. Black Shield was down, so that stun's gonna land, and he's down a half health already. We'll have Zonia's, and let's see if they can get enough damage with Dominate. Alex will get stunned here. He's gonna get pulled into the turret, but no, Shen ult's gonna say, hey, we don't really care. And now Dominate gonna get Shen tiled underneath the turret. Wow. Will not matter. Kill picked up as well. Excellent teamwork there by Moscow 5, pulling in something 7,000 gold lead, and Kogma being pulled towards the top of the map. They might go for Baron. You can only applaud that, really. I mean, that was just great, great play from Moscow 5. Very well executed. Perfect placement. And, uh, you know, even despite the fact that whether they knew that Dominate was there or not, as soon as he came out, it's just like, well, we're going to deal with that. We're going to take away this. Now, oh, the Darien diving on towards Voiboy is going to keep Voiboy away from this fight. I'm a cute spike coming back in there. He's got Black Cleaver completed. Will manage to do a bit of damage, but oh, look at that. Cogmore catches onto him. I'm a cute is going to go down. Darien now, you can see Voiboy trying to get across, trying to use his ult. He got no, oh, he didn't get the steal. Instead, it is going to be Voiboy that will go down. Does manage to stun Darien out. Can he dash across and get it on him? It doesn't matter. They don't care. They have five men up with that Baron buff and well can anyone in the world stop Moscow 5 that's the question they've gone untouchable throughout this tournament and I'm looking that way again they have just been fantastic form this event yep there we go Scar putting out a little bit of harassment there but the turret does go down three turrets so all outer turrets now picked up by Moscow 5 picked up every dragon and now the Baron this time not getting stolen and they're looking in great shape 10k gold the lead and they're just, I mean, they're putting on a clinic, honestly. They've not made any mistakes that I could tell. I mean, the one mistake was, oh no, we took two deaths in a team fight that we won. Yeah. Oh no. So, Moscow 5, definitely playing well. It looks like they are looking to hold their lead. They did a good job last time of not giving that away. We'll see if they can keep that trend up. Genji gonna be given the blue buff. Looks like they said, hey, you know, Rise, you have enough mana, you have enough cooldown reduction. Let's give it to someone else, okay? <laughs> Just give it to someone else. Skara will take up their blue, though. And even the ping goes down from Moscow 5. They had the timings on that. Clairvoyance goes down just a little bit too late, though. So Moscow 5 pushing up the middle there with that Baron buff. They've all been back to bite. You can see them stacking up on the items. Phantom Dancer now completed by Genja. 3-0-4 Genja. Shen is 4-0-4 as well. They could not pin him down at the start. And, well, it's starting to show he's becoming a very scary creature. Looking towards Shen. You can see he's up to uh, 3,200. 71 hit points that will only get higher and higher as this game goes on Moscow 5 Carefully making sure they don't get picked off. We saw it yesterday with uh, Dignitas versus uh, Against all authorities in the third place playoff that fact that they just they were a little bit wary yeah, A little bit exhausted I think from playing all day and actually got caught out in some pretty sloppy positions That's what Dignitas actually need Moscow 5 to do, but I don't think that's gonna happen They have looked phenomenal throughout this event and they are well on their game at the moment looking towards i'm a cute spy trying to keep alex six at range there meanwhile you can see diamonds quite happily tanking away on that turret he has got minions with him trying to cut across you can see shen getting ready to dive over as well scara is aware he's there they've got the ward in that brush and void boy actually gonna come behind him are they gonna try and dive on towards darry and they might do Dar darbine is going out didn't quite land it though and they will back away from that one genja was there in support but that bottom turret is going to go down. See the inner turret now for Moscow 5. Picking it away. It's going to be 4-1 in turrets. Are they going to move around? Are Dignitas going to get caught out from behind here? Or will they just keep pushing into the base? You know, if Dignitas don't respond to this, they're going to quite happily lay a bit more damage down to that base turret. Finally, Dignitas are going to have to peel away. But that's going to leave the exposed in the middle. And Dignitas continue to hammer away. Oh, the caught up towards Genja. Will they have to follow up? No. They don't really have the positioning to go for it. And they're kind of worried about these two Moscow 5 players, Diamonds and Alex Hitch, pushing in towards this inner turret. Are they going to catch on to them? They have to try and come around the backside. No, Moscow 5 are too slippery. Yep, they will run away. The Janna passive helping them ever so slightly as well. Global 3% movement speed for grabbing Janna. You see they're just poking so very well. Genja getting babysat by Ghost Pepper. And when he has Golem buff, he basically just keep poking with that ultimate forever and ever and ever, rely on that mana regeneration to keep that going. Diamonds and Alex, and you called it, you know, they have Shen, they're going for that split pushing play style, and, but this time it's working, so I don't see why they would ever give this up. I didn't expect the three lane split push. <laughs> I yeah, gotta be honest. They're so individually strong, they can do it. They have the tankiness in, in the uh, the Rise Udyr, they have 
the ability to just run really fast and CC everyone away with Janna and Pogma. And then Shen is just Shen. He can dash, he can ult big back into his team. It's working out for him. Again, the dragon will be picked up here by Moscow 5. The Baron buff has ended, so about 29.50 for the respawn there. And then about 33 minutes for the dragon. There you taking away pretty much all of the jungle. At least the uh, rich half of it. And Alex now coming back around towards top. And looks like, once again, we're going to push more of these outer turrets. We've got four of them. There are two more that are fairly easy they could go for. Demon's House actually sitting on top of a ward, so they know where most of the team is. And Kog'Maw actually going to be soloing bot lane. It's a little bit scary. He could get caught out. Take a page from Hot Shots book. <laughs> I had to. Right? <laughs> you just had to hate on him there. But uh, I'll keep my eye on Shen. You can see Alex is sneaking up on the side of I Will Dominate. He will go past the ward, though, so I Will Dominate will spot that straight away. And as you mentioned down the bottom there, Genja isn't going to get caught out, I don't think. That top inner turret will go down. Darian's been slowly working that one down. They are going to dive on him, though. Genja is going to get caught out by Boy Boy. Will this be enough? The ulti oh, from Shen yeah. coming in, of course. He is available. Now they're going to turn it around. Can they get the slow across? They do manage to land the slow, and Boy Boy will go down here, and Genja turns that one around. Darian picks up the kill, and you know what? You just can't do anything about that nasty Shen. He will get across that map, cover off, and that is the, the benefit we talked about in the picks and bans. It's so important, and they had that choice do we ban Shen do we ban Shivana what do we go for and you know what they had to leave them available and whether that's just a case of they lost the game in the picks and bans it's just been played very well by uh, Moscow 5 Dignitas unable to capture any kills in the early lane phase like you mentioned they only managed yep. to get those two from that single team fight and they've just just not been able to catch Moscow 5 out they are so on their game right now they're just not leaving anything to chance yeah that was such a clever move too to sort of bait with Kogma I, I gotta believe it was on purpose to say hey mm. We want to break the stalemate somehow. It's going to kill. I know. But you can get Voiba to go for Kogma and then just shuttle and then flash dash when he dies. That was definitely a very, very good move there. You saw Kogma actually holding onto Voidus until he needed to use it to slow Aurelia's escape. Ryze actually spamming laugh. I like that a little bit. Oh! I'm almost catching up diamonds right there in the brush. Actually, Morgana might go for the duck. Oh, okay, it's down. Actually, she had used just it earlier. Used it. Yeah. Baron going to be up very, very soon, within 20 seconds. Moscow 5 mostly ready. Shen, his ult's actually down in 15 seconds, so there's a small window here for the Gintas to make something happen. I don't think it's likely, though. That's ticking back up 10 seconds ago now. And actually, Shen waiting calmly in the brush. They actually don't see any of the Gintas anymore. The Gintas only see Shen. They do know that Baron's still down for a few more seconds. This is very, very soon to spawn, though. And Morgana is going to come around towards Darren. Darren's going to quite happily go for Skara there. Having to shield up. And Makita Pai coming around in support. Meanwhile, Genja again baiting and absolutely hammering away on that middle turret. He's going to back away. You can see he's trying to bait to see if anyone's going to come near in. Meanwhile, he's buying time for Shen to continue pushing that bottom lane. They're just split happily farming while the Baron gets picked up here. Just biding their time. Genja actually being used as a stopgap. Remember, obviously, Chen can push across, so that's keeping Aurelia over here. So it's going to be force a 4v4, or it's effectively a 5v5. Oh, Dominic getting caught out, tries to ulti in there, doesn't manage to get the steal, though. Now Diamonds is going to flash through and catch our Locust. That will turn it heavily in Moscow 5's favor. They're going to catch on towards Skara as well, put the ward down. Dark Binding does manage to catch on towards Diamonds. Chen is coming around the backside, though. It will be Skara they go for. Has got Zonya's Hourglass to use. Will he go for it at all? No, I think it's a little bit too late, and he will get popped. Yeah, that's going to be... Three for nothing. Boy Boy now caught out as well. That's four. And the fifth one will be Ami Kutupai, who's going to try to get away with that. Moscow 5, not too worried. They're going to turn around, pick away at those turrets. Bottom lane has already been pushed up. That base turret will go down. The general ulti helps them tank it through. And the inhibitor will follow 16-2. And, well, that is it. Well played, Moscow 5. They are the world champions here at Intel Extreme Masters at CBIT. It has been a fantastic performance from them and a really well-deserved championship. And what a great celebration from these guys. You know, it means a lot to them. $50,000 has been taken for this Russian team. They were champions in Kiev and they've continued their dominance, losing one game across two events. That's just phenomenal by them. The level of teamwork there, the level of individual skill additionally, they crushed everywhere. They took no mercy this game.
or the last game, they showed just complete mastery. Even the little things where Shivana was going to steal Baron and he ruined Prison to not enable him to flash or to ult over the wall because they knew, okay, we've got two seconds to go. Rune Prison will last long enough. There's the Baron. Oh, and you, you jump too late. Just yeah. so many little things, so many great things as well where, you know, they had this great roaming strategy game one and they just crushed everything everywhere. They That option was denied to them this time. They're like, well, it's okay. We'll just out lane you everywhere and we know how to win late game. We know how to team fight. They took that dragon battle, won it four to two. Moscow Five definitely deserving champions this tournament. Absolutely 2-0, and oh, very clear victory. And it was great to see, I think that was the Counter-Strike team that was actually up there with them, uh, celebrating. So, you know, keep, keeping that camaraderie going along between them and they are going to go across and congratulate Dignitas. You know, Dignitas are not going away empty-handed. They've picked up $20,000 for coming second place in the World Championships. It's not a bad accomplishment. Obviously, they'd have wanted the gold. Obviously, they'd have wanted the trophy, but Moscow Five's name will be the one going on towards that trophy and really well deserved by them. Unfortunately for Skara and Voiboy and Co, they will not pick it up. You can see the, the, the I would dominate there looks distraught, actually. And uh, well, taking a cheeky glance at that trophy as they pass by, <laughs> maybe patting it as they walk by. But Alexic in the middle as well, and alongside him, the, the whole team played fantastically well throughout that tournament. There's not really anyone you can individually pick because their teamwork was just phenomenal. Yeah, that, that really was a Moscow five full team effort. Darian again going super positive, 6-0-6 six, oh, six this game. Diamond 3-0-6. Oh, Normally he actually has among the highest deaths on his team. A smile on Diamond how there. aggressively he plays. A big smile on Darian though. Mm -hmm. And that's the first time we saw Voiboy losing out really in the lane. And that, yeah. we know we mentioned it, a lot of the players that I talked to about saying if Dignitas will win it, but it says it, a lot of it said it's down to Voiboy. Voiboy has to pick it. There's a great big feeder banner. <laughs> because I didn't spot that in the crowd earlier. Maybe that's being given across to uh, Amiguti for 0-5-0. Zero, five, zero. Aww, aww. But uh, there is Darian, let's go five. And Alex Itch with him as well as Genja. It's been a fantastic match as well by those guys. You know, it's going to feel incredible for them. Like you say, two events back to back. They've turned up and they've taken clean sweeps here. And, you know, they've gone unbeaten at the World Championships. That's massive. Yeah, and that's, I'm, uh, geez, that is just so crazy. We watched, uh, you know, some of these these teams in the other in the in the other you know world finals here, where it was you know three two for Puma versus MC, and you know for, for the CS 1.6, it was it was these teams who barely made it out of group stages or barely qualified at all, uh, and then you know then finally making their way out there. But this time, Moscow Five was like, yeah, we, we lost one map the entire time at the last tournament, uh, and no maps here, and they had some close wins for for sure. They they almost lost that game two to Steel. They almost lost the game in groups to curse, but uh, even still losing one game in groups, losing one game in the in the semifinals, that's not enough to knock you out of a tournament. They've just been phenomenal this whole way through, showing so much mastery, and uh, these guys are so, so deserving of the title. They are so deserving, and obviously they had a, a tricky path coming into here. There was the apology, obviously, that went out before the event. Yeah. They came into this quite humble as a team, and, you know, they, it means a lot to them. I believe, you know, after the semifinals, we saw quite a bit of an emotion coming out from Alex as well. He was, he was, it was a, yeah. There was a couple of tears in there. You know, the, this means a hell of a lot to these guys. And uh, rightly so, $50,000 is massive in Russia. Oh, yeah. I mean, they're going to be happy to, to have that, of course. Um, sure, it's split five ways, but still, I mean, that, that, is, that is massively yeah. awesome for them. And, of course... Look uh, at the big smile. <laughs> yeah, I mean, they're, they're just like, oh, man, we are the best team in the world. They are certainly... Uh, you know, gearing up, looking great for, for the for the season two challenger circuit as well. Uh, just in general, they were already the first place team in Europe, and now they've really cemented that one. Um, I mean, these guys are. They, there's more to come for them. You you got to know that. Whether they have a spotty record online, they seem to always win on land. It's kind of funny. It's almost like Fnatic was with season one, where everyone yeah. was like, oh, Fnatic, you know, eh, and then they're like, crush faces. And at Moscow 5, you'll see them lose matches. They lost to, against Authority like less than a week ago online. They lost to CLG EU um, in a pretty recent tournament final online. But they show up on land, they're like, yeah, don't care, going to win. And in terms of big events, they've actually probably equaled, uh, I say, Fnatic. Obviously, they won the DreamHack. Yeah. They've won a stage here at, uh, in New York. Uh, CLG obviously won Gamescom. Mm -hmm. uh, they won at uh, the World Cyber Games as well. So they kind of equaled the two big tournament record now that everybody got. So Moscow Five really have put themselves in that plateau. And I'd say yeah. what I'd say they're at the top of it. 
I think they are at the top of that. I think it's up to everyone else to try to match this level. And you just look at what happened game one. I have not seen any team play like that. No. That, okay, sure, you know, they, in they the World Championship Kiev. Finals well, sure. to invade the jungle at level two. Well, yeah, and, 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 I mean, there, there's so many things. I mean, well, that, that's just Moscow 5, right? Moscow yeah. 5, like we saw at Kiev, they will steal your buffs. They'll give someone, like, blue or red at the very start, and then he'll go lane. And we saw that with, with Darien getting red on pirate pretty much every game and, and crushing that way, forcing the pirate bans. And we saw that with, with Urgot getting blue. But the, the whole team coming around saying, hey, this strategy is we're going to 1v2 you at bottom lane, and we have Rome Alistair and repeated gank Lee Sin. And then the amount that they were just able to camp every lane and crush every lane, I have not seen that from any other team. Normally, you'll see things where, you know, you know, something that Solo Mid does where they will have the odd one camp mid really hard and Reginald will win, win that mid lane really, really hard, but, you know, by virtue of ganks. And that kind of did happen here, but they won every lane that way. They had everyone, you know, part of the team ever. But, you know, with Rome Alistair, for example, which we hadn't seen in, in honestly over a year, really. Uh, and so there's so many cool factors here that have led to Moscow 5 success. But we're going to hear it from the mouths of the players. We have them up on stage with Rivington the third for an interview.